everybody, what is up? My name is Mike, my channel is MDH5169. Thanks for tuning into the vlog. Today I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about my 2011 Kawasaki KLR650. Now, some of you might not be into motorcycles. I've had hit and miss moments throughout the years, but I do love this bike. Now, a little history on the bike as I do my little walk around on it. Uh, bike is basically has been about the same since 1987. Uh, hasn't changed a lot. Very basic dual purpose bike. And for those of you who don't know what a dual purpose bike is, it's a bike that can do street and off-road comfortably. So this bike actually does it very well. Now this bike has been called a bike that does everything good but nothing great. And basically what it means by that is the bike will go off-road and do just fine, but it's not going to do as well as a strictly off-road bike. The bike will go through the twisties, will cruise along down the streets, cruise along freeway speeds, that type of thing, but not as well as an actual street or sport bike. So it does everything good, but nothing great. So it's a good overall bike. Now, um, basically, like I said, the bikes remained unchanged since '87, 2011, which is what this um, what this one is. They went through and did a few changes, beefed up a few things, gave it a little bit more power, but it's still not a powerhouse. I mean, it's a single cylinder, 651 cc liquid cooled motor. I think it produces somewhere around 36 horsepower. So, and the bike, I think with all fluids and everything like that, it's right around 450 pounds. So, you know, with me on it, just a little over 600, 630, 640, somewhere in that area. So, it scoots along okay. It'll get you out in traffic. It'll get you down the freeway just fine. Not a real great biker riding two up, so if you want to take a passenger, you probably want to look at a different bike, but it will do it. Like I said, it will do everything pretty well. So, story for me behind this bike is um, I've been into bikes, I've had bikes, quads, three wheelers, uh, off road, on road, everything from the time I was like six years old. So, I've had a list of, of motorcycles. And back in like 2010, I had a street bike. It was actually on an off-road bike also, but I'm riding on the street and I just started thinking about it and thought, man, if I fall off and I get hurt, it's going to take a long time to heal. So I decided at that point I was going to get rid of all my motorcycles, I was going to be done with them, I was going to strict to strictly the four-wheel toys, and that's what I did up until maybe about a year and a half ago, and then I started thinking that, hey, I'd like to get another motorcycle. So what motorcycle would I like to get? Well, the favorite one that I've, I've owned in my past is the KLR650. I actually bought a brand new 1995 KLR650 that was without a doubt, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, the ugliest color combination that Kawasaki put on the KLR650. It was white and fuchsia and purple and yellow and wasn't the most attractive bike, but it was a great bike. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I had a performance pipe and um, uh, air cleaner air filter put on just for a little more power and I don't know if it really gave it any more power but it certainly sounded a lot better this bike is very very quiet so after having the 95 for a little while I ended up selling it years down the road I had the opportunity to buy another one I bought a 2006 and in what in my opinion is the best color combination that Kawasaki ever put on these bikes black with the Kawasaki green um, so that was really the bike I wanted buy back. I wanted a 2006 in that color combination. I found one on Craigslist, but the guy just didn't want to budge on the price enough and we couldn't come to terms. So the story behind this one is um, I started looking for a KLR 650 and knew that that's what I wanted. And I found this one on Craigslist and it was in Turlock. And that's the only reason I responded because it was in Turlock. If, if not, I would have just bypassed this bike. But the miles were low, it had like 1600 miles on it. Um, but the guy on Craigslist did not have a phone number or any way to contact him other than email. And I do not like contacting through email on Craigslist. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a video coming very, very soon on my like pet peeves about Craigslist and do's and don'ts and things like that. So you don't want to miss that one. So anyway, I went on ahead and emailed the guy. Like I said, I figured the bike was local. I was interested. It'd be easy for me to get if I bought it. So I emailed the guy. I don't hear from him. I wait a day or two, I email him again, he still doesn't respond. And that's the problem with Craigslist email. Sometimes emails just get lost, sometimes they end up in spam. So, but again, I'm going into the other video. So, I think, okay, well, haven't heard from him, didn't work out, I'm just going to move on. So I start looking again, 
And about a day after this, I happen to be driving by a house that's maybe two, two and a half miles from my house. And I look over and I see a spike sitting in the front yard. Same exact bike, the background's the same, looks the same from the picture that I'd seen on Craigslist. So I stop, I check, I look, yeah, the miles, sure enough, like 1,600 miles. I knock on the door, no answer. I come back a little bit later, knock on the door again, still no answer. So day or two goes by, I'm driving by again, because at this point I'm kind of stalking the place a little bit, I'll admit it. And um, I see a guy out in front. So I stop, talk to him, his name's Mike. Actually, we've become good friends now. And um, long story short, we talked it over, I rode the bike, I liked it, we made a deal, and I ended up riding the bike home about a week or so later. So, you know, the bike's a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy it. So, I really like having the case on the back. I know some of you might think the case looks a little dorky, but I can put a full-size helmet in the back of it, and it's nice to have storage, especially when you're on a bike. Now, I've ridden it to work a couple times when I was working, and it cruises down the freeway 70, 75, holds freeway speeds no problem. Like I said, and it's still got enough power to pass or do what you need to do. Uh, um, I am not a great rider by any means, and I don't claim to be. I cannot throw it over in the twisties and run through the corners real fast. I cannot do any serious off-roading with the bike, so I just enjoy the bike. It's a lot of fun. It's lightweight. It's nimble. I can kind of flick it around and put it where I want to put it. Um, it brakes really good, and I love it. The only thing I've done to the bike since I've had it is I uh, just had it, all the service done because I know the service probably wasn't done by the previous owner. Um, I believe I'm the third owner on the bike. I think right now I just actually finished riding it, and it's got just a little over 1,900 miles on it. So I don't ride it a ton. Had a year and a half and put not even 300 miles on the bike. But um, it's a lot of fun. If you're looking at a dual sport bike, I highly recommend this one. Like I said, it gets down the road very well. It's comfortable uh, for one person. You know, with the way the seat is designed, you can slide back and forth on that seat and get into numerous comfortable positions. If you need to stand up on the pace, you can do that. So for long distance, it'd be a, a very nice ride. A lot, a lot of a very comfortable. Uh, a lot of people pack a lot of stuff and take these things on like week or month long journeys and go like across continents on them and do things like that. So they're known to be very bulletproof. Um, they're known to be very, very good bikes. And um, yeah, I'm sure that this one will last me a long time. I don't plan on getting rid of it. Like I said, I don't ride it a lot, but when I do ride it, it brings a smile to my face. So um, with that, let's see. Just, uh, let me just kind of end the video on that and just touch bases on a couple things that are going on. Let's see, um, the vehicle that I bought in Florida, still waiting on it. Uh, still has to get have to get it on a truck and get it out here. I'm trying to get it on an enclosed truck So I am hoping that it gets on a truck this week. So I will do a video when that arrives. because I'm really excited about that uh, Trans Am sitting over there Had a little issue. I just that's the one I just got maybe a month ago had a little issue and still having a little issue With the motor kind of dying out on me. It's missing a little bit when it gets really warmed up and uh, My buddy Eddie my mechanic. He did a full tune-up on it I just kind of played around with the carburetor. We might have to go through the carburetor, back in advance, things like that to try to figure it out. It's a fresh motor and it runs really good when it's cold or even kind of lukewarm, but once it gets some real good heat in it, it's having some issues there. So working on that. So also, I'm gonna take you guys out real quick because I did get the Tahoe lifted back up out in this bright, bright sun. Um, took it down to my buddy Jesse at Discount Tire and Turlock and got the front end lifted up put a little tar profile tires on the Tahoe and it there it is right there sitting under the carport and it rides so much better it's like a night and day difference it's huge I mean like we're talking Cadillac ride in comparison look probably a little bit better lower down the front but I'm looking for comfort so I'm very very pleased with it so um, with that it's hard for me to talk and ride the bike so I can't really do any um, anything like that so basically what I did is I went out I set the camera and I shot some video while I was riding so I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in at the end of this video but see I'm already getting to 11 minutes and I don't want to go too much longer so um, I, the video is not the best in the world uh, the camera I had to use a chest camera and it really was only catching like the handlebars and a little bit of the instrumentation so I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in at the very end big truck going by so um, 
but if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, MDH5169. Any comments or anything like that, please send them my way. I appreciate it. And with that, thanks for watching. God bless and have a great day. A couple of little things that I forgot to mention about the bike. Um, something noteworthy is the bike has a six gallon gas tank, which is one of the reasons I actually bought it. And last time I checked the mileage, which is the only time I've checked the mileage on the bike, it was getting like 55 miles to the gallon. So you do the math. You can go like 250, 300 miles before you even need to switch to reserve. So that's kind of awesome. Makes for really a nice little commuter. Um, one other thing that I did do, those crash bars there on the side, I actually had those put on um, Previx Experience, my 2006. I was doing a little off-roading and dropped it over and ended up screwing up these plastics. So now at least they're a little bit more protected. So actually the worst wreck I ever had was on my 95. I laid it over in a corner and had quite a bit of road rash. So kind of makes you wonder why I bought the bike. I don't know, I didn't want to think about it. So anyway, just wanted to throw those two things in real quick.